Um, in the Big East, four teams in the top 25, four teams in the top 10 of the RPA, including you guys in both. Can you speak to kind of the gauntlet you faced week in, week out, and even starting Big East play? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Like I told our team, we can't get hung up on one game results. You know, it's uh, going to be the end of the world uh, for some people when we lose a game. And it's going to be euphoria, euphoria for some people when we win a game. And our team can't have that mentality. Um, the league has proven itself uh, during the non-conference uh, slate that we have some of the best basketball in the country. And we have to understand that and know that we're going to be challenged every night. And uh, we have to quickly turn the page no matter what the result is. Do you feel like the team did that, turn the page quickly in the non-conference as well? It's, a, it's, a, it's two different animals. You know, you're talking about familiarity. You know, you're talking about guys that have played against one another for three years, some four years. Uh, it's just um, it, it's just a lot different. You know, generally you have a little bit more of a routine during conference play. You play, you're off a couple of days, play, a couple of days, play. Everybody's playing one another. It's just completely different from the non-conference part of things. And I guess a better question might be, how do you think non-conference prepared you to start the big sports team schedule? That is a better question. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Coach, how much do guys uh, – I, I know fans and people always point to March what happens in the, in the big dance, that kind of thing. But how much do you as a team point to Big East Conference and that being something you guys really want to win? Uh, I mean, we point to everything. I mean, everything's important to us. Uh, but, you know, when, when your schedule is 60% league play and you're playing the best teams in the country, um, you get them home and away, um, you know, it's, it's really, really important. You know, again, it's not the end of the world when you drop a game and you can't feel like you've arrived when you win a game. You have to be able to quickly turn the page. And, um, you know, the, uh, the thought of a Big East title is really, really, really far down the road. But I would be less than honest if I said it didn't matter. I mean, that's what we're shooting for. And you got to do it one game at a time. I know it's coach speak, but um, you know, it starts tomorrow night for us. I know you guys are constantly evaluating, <clears throat> tweaking things as the season goes. But do you get to this point before conference play starts and really kind of maybe put in a few new wrinkles and change things during this? Brief break or not really? I don't know how much you change it, but I think you adapt some things to your personnel. Um, I think you maybe find out where where your your true deficiencies are on both ends of the floor, and you know figure out ways to address it. You have more time to work with individual players because you know we're out of school, and we have the opportunity to get them in um, the gym maybe in the morning, whereas it's a little bit more difficult when, when you're tackling a full class schedule if you're a player. Uh, and then we've had a couple nice breaks. Obviously, we get back for Christmas. Um, we gave them Christmas off, so there wasn't a ton of time. But you know, we, we faced a little bit of a break after Georgetown game. We have seven days before we play again. Uh, so over the last couple weeks, we've tried to add a few new things. I think have helped our team. Providence it's a lot different this year. No Chris Dunn, no Ben Bentel. Um, it seems like a lot of what they do goes, goes through uh, Cartwright. Can you talk about what he brings to the team? You know, Ed said it in the offseason that he felt like Kyron Cartwright was going to be the most improved player in the league and wasn't sure necessarily if that was just Ed trying to talk his players up, and, and, but he's really proven it. Um, you saw glimpses of it last year, but Chris Dunn was so ball dominant that, you know, everything you did as an opponent was prepare for, for Dunn and Bentle. And I think Cartwright is the most or one of the most improved players. I haven't seen every guy in our league, certainly, but he is one of the most improved players. Uh, I would put him right there with Maurice Watson in terms of his ability to get up and down the floor. He's as fast as any guard we've played. Um, he also has that herky-jerky, um, hesitation, Nick Van Exel type game. Keeps defenders you know, off balance. So he's, he's a tough guard, and he puts pressure by getting in the lane and, and he really has an ability to find teammates. He plays for his teammates first. Um, he's a huge challenge and I think teams that don't understand that uh, don't understand what what Providence is, is bringing to the table in Kyron Cartwright. Is Providence a little better than you expected coming into the year? 
I don't really have expectations for anybody in the league. Um, I worry about our own team. But they certainly surpassed, I think, outsiders' expectations. Maybe even Coach Cooley's. You'd have to ask him that. But um, the thing about Providence is they have a culture. And you can tell by the way they uh, play in games. They're never going to be out-toughed. Um, they're going to know their roles on offense. And they're not going to go outside of those roles. They're going to really play together. Certain guys are three-point shooters. Some, certain guys are uh, drivers. Certain guys are, are play creators, and that's how they that's how they set up their their offense. That's how their players play, and they're committed to it. And then they rebound. Um, you know, really, really physical team from the one through the five. That's just how they play. You know, on defense, they're going to try to muddy things up. They're going to be physical with you. Uh, they're going to play off. Um, and they're very, very effective. But I think culture is probably the key reason why they, why the, you know, the way they are this year. Malcolm asked in his press conference how he's done through the first part of the season. It was kind of critical of himself. Felt like he hasn't scratched the surface yet of what he can do. Would you agree with that assessment? Or what do you think of Malcolm so far? I think he's really progressed. Um, I think that, you know, he wasn't very uh, confident early on in the season. Um, you know, he has really gained an understanding of, of how we want to play on both ends of the floor. Um, I want him to be able to finish on offense through contact a little bit better. I don't know if he mentioned that, but I think that's the one thing that's holding him back. I thought he's played a lot more aggressive as of late, which has been a great thing. Um, but I think he is just scratching the surface, which is really odd to say for a fifth-year senior. But, you know, you're trying to fit in with established teammates. You're trying to fit in with a, uh, a program that's used to winning. Come all the way from the state of Florida. It's just been an adjustment, but I think he's practiced really well over the last two to three weeks, and um, our team needs him. It's been great to see. He seems from the outside to be someone that like gets the system that hasn't had trouble figuring it out. Is that a testament to him being just a smart guy or a fifth year player? He's a very instinctive defender. Um, cares. And he is smart, um, but uh, he also had a lot of bad habits when he got here. And bad habits might be unfair. Different habits would probably be better. Um, you know, we're not necessarily a denying team, and that's been in uh, Malcolm's DNA for four years. I mean, he's out in the passing lanes, and you know, not that we won't take a steal here and there, but it can't be at the expense of giving up position. Um, you know, for every one you get, you can't give up a back door, and so uh, we're more of a positional-based defense, and that, that's not something that. Is like I said before, been in his DNA, and so that's been an adjustment. I think it's been an adjustment to play with as talented of players. I think it's been an adjustment to play against the type of competition that we faced. Um, so, yeah, it's been an adjustment, but I think he's doing great. Was there any, uh, any timetable, any update on the last day of the You're not the jerk. Next question. Is it nice having Miles back in Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, I don't mean to be dismissive, but I've, a I've answered this, sure. you know, over and over and over and over. So you can rewind whatever statements I said the last time. When he's back, he'll be back. And, um, you know, that's it. Going back to Malcolm, like, he, he's obviously well aware that Villanova won a national championship, and he knows on paper how tough the league is going to be. But for him, guys like him and, and Rasheed, you know, do you have to like say anything to them? I mean, or do they just know that these are really big games and require a little bit more? I think their teammates probably do most of that. Um, you know, we prepare uh, for everybody the same. So when we pre prepared for North Dakota State, um, it'll be no different from how we prepare against Providence. You know, we don't come in the locker room and say, okay, now you really have to pay attention. We prepare the same way. Uh, I'm sure their teammates, you know, talk about players like, man, that guy's the real deal, or they play fast, or, man, they're, they're really strong. You know, just how players talk. But as coaches, we don't, we don't come in the locker room and say, now I really need your attention. Hope everybody had a great Christmas.